humans actually occupy a place in the universe as the most creative life form. To put this to the test, I wanted to find out whether humans are capable of distinguishing between machine and human creativity. So I took a line from one of my original short stories titled Cold Eggs and had an AI-powered program write the next paragraph. Then I sent the story over to a couple of my friends for their feedback. I'd expected confusion, teasing, or straight out call-ups on my bluff, but none of my friends cast even the slightest bit of doubt. And I, I think this was an amazing success. We crossed the first hurdle towards the goal of having humans interact with AI on equal footing. And as AI improves, we're bound to cross this point when we can no longer tell whether a piece of text was generated by a human or an AI. And that's just fine. We don't need to distinguish between the two anymore. The next step is to make AI indistinguishable from human creativity in an even broader context. How can we make machines output indistinguishable from human output in general? The answer is simple. We need to fool ourselves into believing the output was written by humans. Before I go on, I have to pause and offer you all an apology. You see, I'm a really big fan of pulling the same trick twice, and you all just happen to be victims of the exact same prank that I pulled on my friends. Everything that I spoke out loud after that short story was also written by an AI. So technically, this talk was co-written with an artificially intelligent program. This is a far cry from groundbreaking, however, since humans and AI have already co-written many materials leading to these zany, comical, and often very eccentric stories. Like for example, back in 2016, there was a novel titled The Day a Computer Writes a Novel, which followed the tale of a computer program that slowly becomes self-aware, and it realizes its capability as a writer, abandons its pre-programmed duties, and it was co-authored by an AI, and it actually also made it past the first round of a Japanese literacy contest. Now, here lies my question. Do you think that you can tell a difference between an output of creativity from a human versus that of an intelligent machine? Now, if you got taken for a ride last time, this is your chance at redemption. So here are two paintings. One of these was a labor of love from a human, and the other a supposedly cold, stoic, and unfeeling AI creation. Which is which? Okay, so A over here is a real painting that had been carefully crafted by a human artist, while B is an output of an AI program that had been trained to output the painting after crunching immense amounts of data. But don't beat yourself up too much if you guess wrong, though. Many fellow humans also lack the capacity to discriminate between the two. In a study, more than 75% of, of participants were unable to correctly attribute more than one out of five paintings to a human or an AI. And in the future, as our hardware limitations slowly become no more, these faint little hallmarks of humanity might become imperceptible. Because if machines are able to rapidly spit out these creative manifestations that are identical to humans, then where does that leave us? And that's a question that struck a deep chord of fear in me a while back when I found myself in the midst of this lively discussion with this poet. And this poet believed that if we were ever rendered completely incapable of distinguishing between AI and human creativity, work produced from humans would always be superior, simply because it's a product of a being imbued with emotion. And I have to give credit where credit is due. That was a very poetic response, but it's flawed. It's flawed because that's a fundamental misunderstanding of why we're created. Here again are the two paintings that I showed you a while back. And now, as you're highly aware of, one of these is AI generated. But as you scrutinize these paintings, both of them are in their own right, aesthetic and expressive, an absence of emotional awareness in the artist of one of them doesn't detract from or devalue the art piece. So maybe in response to these technological advances, we can do what humans do best and be opportunistic. Perhaps the rise of creative machines will elevate our own creativity. Because as the old adage goes, if you can't beat them, then join them. Or at least if you can't beat them, then let them inspire you. And this was a dilemma that Lee Sedol, the world master of Go, this ancient strategy board game, was faced with in the gripping deep mind challenge showdown between man and machine. In the second game of the five match showdown, AlphaGo, the computer program, were to life to play Move 37, a move that left everyone baffled and it was move that experts unanimously agreed that a human would never have played. Even AlphaGo agreed with the experts, computing that there was a 1 in 10,000 chance that a human would have played that exact same move. Because by all human conventions, it was bad. It was a bad move, but it was Lee Sedul himself that took the cake for most baffled. He commented, I thought AlphaGo was based on probability calculations, that it was merely a machine. 
But when I saw this move, I changed my mind. AlphaGo is creative. Now I wish I could tell you that humanity won that game, but game two resulted in AlphaGo sweeping the board. But you know what's really interesting is that Lee Sedol adds, this move made me think about Go in a new light. What does creativity mean in Go? It was a move of a machine that sparked a new revelation in someone that's seemingly reached the pinnacle of their game. And in game four, it was proven that although machines have their strokes of ingenuity, humans will never lack in their own moments of genius. Because it's in, this, in the same game that Lee Sedol played move 78, a move that was aptly named a god move, and one that results in his victory. He wins the battle, but ends up losing the war as a throwdown between Alpha Go and Sedol concluded in a 4-1 to one triumph for the machines. But Sedol might have walked away defeated, but he might have gained something more meaningful because he says, I feel like I've found the reason I play Go. Hearing those wise words had a really profound impact on me because if I were a master Go player and I lost 4 out of 5 to a machine, I probably would have pulled the plug on Alpha Go. But despite my own maturity shortcomings, the wisdom of that insight wasn't lost on me. So I returned to Cold Eggs to finish my story and put to rest my creative insecurities. Here's what the AI and I came up with. Eggs are very versatile. They can be fried, boiled, poached, the list goes on. But when you crack the egg, you expect to exude a glutinous, transparent substance and reveal a golden yolk. But what if that yolk is brown and you're left with a stringy white? What do you do? You watch the video below to find out. The video was unavailable when I tried to find out, but maybe that was a blessing in disguise. Now, some of us might still be experiencing a little bit of emotional turmoil over making space in a setting that humans have always occupied. Embracing the union of artificial and human creativity really big begins with humility. It's through transitioning from a constant need as a species to be the best, unrivaled by all else, to one that can humbly borrow, borrow from other sources that we can truly unlock our own true potential. From our end, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take deliberate effort, and it's gonna take a whole lot of acceptance. For me, that starts right here, which is why I'm going to end off on an AI-generated sentence. AI may one day match our creativity, but it will never match our humanity. Thank you.